Well, g'day comrade subscribers, uh, welcome back, thanks for hanging around. We're at uh, 742 again, after dropping down to 740, uh, which always, it, it interests me. So I'm just trying to think of the, the sequence of videos. It was a Vic 20 video, then it was an Amstrad video, and then it was a beach video, and then it was a rabbit video. So I'm thinking that maybe some Vic 20 subscribers who want Vic 20 stuff 24 seven, unsubscribed after they saw an Amstrad video, but then they resubscribed once they saw a cute bunny video. Or I've got a new subscriber who is interested in bunny videos 24 seven, and so might be a bit confused by this video. Anyway, I appreciate you hanging around. So finally, I thought we'd have another look at this um, card code cassette interface as there was some interest on it. Um, I did upload my other video, which as I pointed out was an abandoned video and that I started doing it um, and I was going to demonstrate it using my Mac, you know, recording a program on Audacity. And then I realized that the Vic wasn't going to start recording until it could tell the tape was running. Um, and I had no way of doing that at that stage. I, you know, well, you know, I can use the remote plug, but I didn't have a, a, um, a switch or something. So anyway, so I, I won't rehash the the first video. There's I went through quite a bit in that one. I'll just say so. This is the uh, this is the box on the Bic. We have um, it's it's for Vic and C64. So uh, this emulates all the function of the 25 dollar data cassette so that's misspelling there or wrong words there uh displays press play and tape press play and record on your monitor as required includes all the necessary cords and cables starts and stops tape motion automatically as required um, we've got shielding blah 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 so um that's what it looks like this is what it actually looks like <laughs> Um, I've, I've, I've taken it out of the box um, because I've been I've been trying to do a bit of preparation this time. So what we've got is basically two mono 3.5 mil cables. No obvious distinction apart from someone's written on with Sharpie. Uh, one well, I don't know which one that is yet. Let's figure it out. Um, I would have either used a different color plug or just put on red heat shrink, which is what I'll do once we've figured out what is what. So it's quite a quite a long uh, zoom out. It's quite a long cable, so they're pretty generous in that respect. Um, and here's the 2.5 mil um, remote, so to automatically engage the the tape motor and to stop it. So we've had a look at this before in the other video, so but we'll go through it again. Um, like I said, I've I, I have taken some some uh, I have done some research. Dum, 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 dum. You can't walk anywhere; you've got to run everywhere. So pretty simple board. Uh, as I, I didn't realise this before, but uh, Chris and John pointed out in the original video that there were two metal um well basically two bits of metal just sticking out of i've taken them off unfortunately because i i'm re-recording re-record anyway whatever so they were sticking out over here like that so i did i did chop them off because from what i can see there is absolutely no reason for them um you have a look in the other i'll, I'll link the original video so yeah i've, I've taken those out um, because yeah, as as John, as John put it out, Mr. Walt, Mr. Valkman, um, they could short across here. Um, yeah. So uh, what we've got, we've got a whole bunch of passives. Uh, we've got some op amps here. Um, this is a seven four seven four down here, uh, which are inverting Schmidt triggers, and we've got a, a read um, switch relay here so this is obviously connected to the to the remote for switching the motor on and off 
Um, and then we've got here, the Schmidt triggers here for doing the Schmidt triggering thing. And we've got some op amps here. So, which is which? Uh, like I said, I have bothered to do some research. Uh, and as there is some interest in reproducing or understanding how this works, I've taken some photos that I'll upload and link to. Um, but first of all, starting off with the cassette port uh, pinout, I found this looks right, so that's what I'm going to use. So based on that, so that's what the board looks like normally. That's what the um, uh, piece of PCB, uh, PCB side looks like normally, and then this is the component side reversed so that it matches the pinouts. So I've done some tracing and I think, so we've got, basically we've got ground, we've got plus five volts, motor. So motor goes off to the reed switch here, which then I assume just shorts the, shorts the two terminals via a pretty hefty uh, resistor um, yeah so shorts shorts by this fellow and yeah anyway so that's how that so that's so there okay so the relay is for switching the motor on and off and that is triggered by the uh, surprise by the motor <laughs> motor thing and I think there's also some feedback on this and we've got the sense here so I think there's some feedback here um, so that it can, anyway, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I should really look what it does, I don't think, off the top of my head. Anyway, so if we have a look at the read and write pins, so right goes off, I don't know if this is, uh, is this clear enough, I know that, yeah, I'm sorry the LED is probably causing some flickering, I need to replace that one still. Actually, should I go on that, or should I just go on the PCB itself? Well, that's easier to follow. Maybe the PCB. Okay, let's go on the PCB. And I'll stick that there, and I'll look at it. So, the right... So, this is apparently the right pin. So, the right pin goes through here, up to here, up to here, which is a resistor over to there. So, yeah, so this, this is ground, so according to the pin out and this is five volts so that to me looked like a pretty good um, ground there so anyway so right goes in through here follows through here up to here which is a resistor where's my inverted picture let me have a look at my inverted picture as I do this yep so there's a resistor that goes to there which goes to ground um and blah, 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 blah. oh no antex so right goes there sorry no it doesn't go there it goes there later so it goes up to here which is pin pin 13 of the schmidt trigger so schmidt trigger input inverting schmidt trigger input output um which is, if we have a look, if you can see it, but I, like I said, yeah, so it's connected there. So Schmidt trigger input, inverted output, input, output, and then the output then goes to resistor to ground. And, and then, yep, and then across to here, which is another resistor, yep. So another resistor across to there, and then this is a capacitor to ground, and then we go up to here to op amp, and that is one, two, three. So that is pin five, and pin five, pin five, yep, is op amp positive input, and do, 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 do. Pin six is the negative, and then pin seven is the output. Um, and you can see pin six and seven. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise it was off the screen. Sorry. So we come up here. 
up to pin 5, which is the positive input of the op amp, negative input here, which is also connected to the output, so I guess some sort of stabilising uh, positive feedback or something, I don't know. Just, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had to do this. And then the output goes over to here, um, and then again, you know, we've got some more passives. And then we have the cable. So this must be the mic cable. That's what I was trying to get to. So let's zoom out and let's see which one this cable is. Okay, and as, ex as expected, it's the one with the mark on it. So that's mic. That should be ear then, which is, which is up the top here where the... Um, where the uh, op amp is, so yeah. So to try it out, first of all, I've got a TI 994A cassette deck, so model PHP 2700. Uh, it's a US model, so it takes 100, 115. What was it rated at? 120. 120 volts input there. It looks like a C7 plug, which is the Cloverleaf, but I don't think the Cloverleaf fit in. But then also it, it does actually look very similar to the Vic20 um, plug, doesn't it? Anyway, um, 6.5 volts, was it? Yeah, no, 6 volts. 6 volts DC in here, but I don't have a plug that fits that. So I have loaded her up with CC batteries. It's working. Um, stop, oh, eject, there we go. Eject comes up, play. So far, so good. So, after all of that, um, Let's connect up the VIC-20 and see what it does. Um, should load in a program. I've never done any sort of copying. Um, I've got a bunch of VIC-20 tapes. Well, I know. Oh, I need to find a cassette, don't I? <laughs> I do have cassettes. Right, let me get set up. Okay, I have found a, uh, a blank tape, computer tape. C15, I think. See, it says CPF15. Um, there we go. Peel it all off. Uh, Contech. One of those famous names in quality. But anyway, the, the irony is that I, I've got more blank digital compact cassettes than I do compact cassettes. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously I can't can't use these unless I was using a DCC recorder. But yeah, so oh, eject um, makes it a bit hard to. Oh, okay, there you can see the tape there. Um, oh, okay. Rewind. All right, all seems to be good. Okay, let me set up the computer. Oh, by the way, um, happy new year. So it's uh, 1st, of, 1st of January 2023. Um, or well, as the Americans would say, January 1st. So hopefully this year will be a good year. Let's see. All right, let's get set up. Okay, I'm all set up. Um, <laughs> I've gone scratching around. And of course, I've also found that I've got a bunch of uh, the feature was 8-bit. Uh, blank tapes as well. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, I'll put them aside. Um, so I'm just trying what to do. So, I've got my Vic 1001 set up, the Japanese one. I still need to... Uh, still need to fix the keyboard a bit. Some of the keys are a bit, uh, a bit flaky. But, let me just go mobile. No, just patience, there we go. Um, so I've got Chris's VGA adapter there set up. 
give me nice crisp VGA output. And I've got the card co plugged in. So, and then I've got, I've got everything plugged in there. So I might try, first of all, I might try loading something. So this is a, uh, a modern Vic 20 game. I think, yep, Vic 20. So let me just try and load that first. Let's see how we go. Okay. Um, I really, I should be capturing the VGA output, shouldn't I? But anyway, so uh, is it stop, load. Okay. So I just press play. Okay, play is pressed. Very quiet. It's supposed to be something out of the speakers. Volume, tone, hmm. Not guaranteed this is going to work first time. Nothing's happening so far. Actually, I guess one simple test I should have done. All right. Don't know what's happening there. Uh, okay. Right. That's interesting. The re rewind stop when I reset it. Okay. So the instructions do say just type load. Okay. Actually, let's re reset again. Oh, interesting. Okay, play plays anyway. Let's pause. Okay, right. Okay, what happens if I just press play? I should type load. <laughs> All right. Let's try this. Uh, like I said, the A, the A is a bit dodgy. I need to fix it. I think that's what I did last time and nothing came up, did it? All right, so I should try try recording something. So I'm not hearing anything out of the speaker. Which I guess I should be hearing. If I fast forward a bit. Nothing. Programs are recorded on both sides, it says. Ah, oh, of course, you're not going to hear anything because the the ear is plugged in. So that's going to obviously cut out the speaker. Uh, so if I unplug... That was the... Okay. Yeah, now I can hear the speakers making a hum. Oh, crikey. Okay, there's definitely data there. Sounds a bit rough, doesn't it? Well, if it was re... Mm. Okay, all right, let's try again. Pressing play, I've got I've plugged ear back in. Of course, it could be that the interface isn't working at all. No, oh, okay, there we go. Timing. So far, so good. All right, we'll let that load and um, we'll come back to it. Hey, surprise, surprise. Um, and the tape stopped automatically. That w 
Oh, I'm crying out soft. I'm a bit disappointed that this isn't going to work. This is the first time I'm trying this one. Um, okay, so let's try load again. So I'm going to have to load. Yeah, for it to rewind. It wouldn't let me rewind. Well, of course, I probably could have disconnected the, uh, the remote. All right, we'll give this one more try on the original side. Of course, yeah, in, in Chronosoft's defense, it could work perfectly well on a proper Commodore data set. Well, let's, yeah, let's just have a listen. Let's, let me just go over to the tape. Okay, so it's ready to go. Press play. Oh, I've got mic unplugged. sound too bad plug obviously it wasn't mic unplugged it was ear so I've plugged the ear back in and let's go back over and watch what happens okay maybe oh yeah ah maybe also maybe the volume was too loud that's the other thing yeah so I've put the volume back to the middle I had it on max so I could hear it out of the speaker. Let's see what happens when it's in the middle. Maybe that's here. Yeah. What does it say about volume? Uh, due to the extensive use of auto level control on recording functions, some player recorders will not produce tapes that can be read by the VIC data set. These units will read all standard tapes made on a data set or mass produced and read their own creations, but the auto level control function will not allow enough signal to be placed on the tape for loading by the data set. All right, so I think, yeah, the issue is here that is that I've got the volume set at the midpoint. So let me increase it. Oh, it's not really the midpoint. It was pretty, almost pretty loud. Um, maybe it was too loud. Let me tell the midpoint. I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I had it set. Pardon my fingernails. I had it set on. What's the best way to do it? On that's max to listen to the. I haven't touched tone at all. Um, Switching it down, so I had it on that, and it couldn't pick anything up. So if I keep going, that's minimum. So how do I tell in the middle? Maybe just set it there, maybe. All right, we'll try that. Okay, let's see. It started out a rainy, rainy day today, and now sun's out, and it's, uh, it's pretty humid. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. And the tape has stopped. Right, let me unplug the remote. Okay, so that's interesting. Let me maybe go down a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna I'll fiddle around. I'm not gonna waste your time. Unless you want to watch this. All right, I've turned the volume down a little bit more. So I'm surprised it doesn't. Oh, maybe because uh, I don't have the I didn't have the instructions with this. I should I should print out the instructions. I've only got the the box. Um. Okay, that's more accurate. So I turn the volume down a little bit more. All right, well, um, well, it shouldn't take too long actually at all. So it's for the unexpanded VIC. So 
and it's machine code. So let's um, look and see. Okay, waiting, waiting. I found some other interesting gadgets for the Vic that we'll have a look at later. All right, maybe we'll return to this. <laughs> it's taking a little bit longer. So, yeah, this is one of the drawbacks of the Commodore system in that you can't hear... That loading. So I'm just used to being able to hear it load and if there's a failure or something or <laughs> if there's silence then you know that something's gone wrong. It's still going. For the unexpected. So I would have thought that it would load pretty quickly if it was only three and a half K or so. So written in 2008 by Steve McRae with Marco Bay's Acme Assembler and the Vice Emulator from www.viceteam.org. So no, it's still, sorry, still loading. When the Vic says ready, type run and enjoy the game. Okay. I think it might have been easier just buying the, spending the $75, although that's a lot of money back then, on the actual data set. Anyway. And the tape just came to the end. So, that was not a successful load either. All right, let me find something else then. All right, let's try something from the future was 8-bit. This one is Escape 2020. Okay. I'll, um... I'll play it without the earphone plugged in just to see what the audio quality is like. Ooh. Okay, all right, let's reset. Plug the earphone back in. How high do we want to go? I think a little bit lower than that. Okay, shift run. All right, let's see how we go with this. So, it is 2020, it has been 2020 forever. It will be 2020 forever more. You must escape 2020. <laughs> So, collect all 44 keys from the rooms of 2020 and find the exit to escape. Your task won't be easy. There are monsters roaming the many rooms and they aren't looking to be your friend. Blast them before you become their dinner. Oh, okay, yep. So far, so good. Um, oh, did I say they have acid for blood? Well, of course they do. This is 2020 after all. Use a joystick to run around. Okay, well, anyway, so this isn't a uh, game review. This is uh, a tape interface review. So let's see how we go with this one. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Oh, so far, so good. <laughs> hey. Tape's still going. 
All right, so loading bars, I guess. That's good. This is good. Dun, dun, dun. Can't walk anywhere. He's got to run everywhere. Right, good on him. Shall we watch the whole thing load? <laughs> so, yeah, I have to try that Chronosoft on a proper data set. Um, yeah, because that, obviously that's what it's designed to be loaded on. Okay. That's interesting. All right, reading into screen memory, I guess, is it? Screen data, RAM. Video RAM. Don't know. I wonder if there's any audio while it's loading. Don't know. Need to Chris's VGA adapter does have an audio out, but I need to charge up my little speaker. And the tape has stopped. Okay, so I think um, what is it? So yeah, okay. I think it's just. Those are trying different font sizes, so for the VGA adapter. There we go. Okay, and the tape has stopped. It won't rewind. Okay, but it has loaded. And I think I'll, I need a joystick for this anyway. So, okay, finally, we've, we've proven that can, it can load something. I assume it will save something. And the next step after that will be using Audacity to save something. Uh, which I'll need to make a um, theme jig. All right, cool. All right, I'll write a, I'll write a quick program so we can save it and let's see, what, let's see how that goes. Hey, look at those leak coding skills. So yeah, just a very stupid program. All right, so let's, I don't know where I put my 40 year old tape. So let's try a future was 8 bit tape. Um, now, when I had my Amstrad, I always used to run it in past the lead-in. Do I have to do that for this? Um, let's try it. I've never... Uh, yeah, I should really... Come on, A. You're important to me, A. There we go. Ah. <laughs> All right. Save. Test, eh? Saving test, okay. Uh, play record. So I don't know if the sense detects, I don't know. All right, I don't think. Okay, let's just reset. Let's just play that back and see where it recorded. Yeah, it sounded like it recorded halfway. <laughs> All right. Let me... It did, re did record it, at least anyway. All right. Okay, there we go. I've just got the... That's the end of the lead-in, and then we've got the magnetic tape ready to go. So... Stick that back in. Uh, <laughs> dance. <laughs> he didn't save it. <laughs> right, let me just type the program in again. Okay, almost done. All right. All right. Okay, now save. Test. Okay. Saving test. I wonder. Are you supposed to press? You're supposed to press play and record and then press return on the on the Vic? Yeah. Ah, okay. Alright, so press play and record first. That was my mistake. Alright, let's try that again. So I've got play and record. 
pressed. Okay, tape is playing. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's reset. Nothing there. Try loading. Of course, the question is was the volume set correctly? Okay. Hey. All right. There we go. It does what it's supposed to. All right. I think actually, I think I'll do I'll do this in two parts. I'll do part two will be the audacity because I need to make up a. I think well I need to research just what the remote does exactly. Um. But yeah, I assume I can just do a switch that shorts it. So. There we go. Um, I hope that was of some interest. Bye for now.